This is Boomer Life on CIL 650. Welcome back to Boomer Life and CIL 650. I'm George Gordon. Today we're talking to Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group Financial Services Incorporated, and his uh, right arm is assistant to Paige Brettel. Oh, associate. Associate. You see? You see? I have to learn these things, George, because she is a smart young person with a lot of great perspective. Paige, I want, I want, to, want you to give people your perspective on why you do this. I'd love to. You know, I want to help people on their financial and their investing journeys because I understand firsthand what can happen when we don't get the right advice at the right time. You know, for busy people, what happens when we're not reviewing our financial plans on a regular basis? And when we're not looking at our goals and we're not tying them to our investment choices, it's about understanding our options. You know, it's about creating a sense of control outlining our priorities and developing a, a greater feeling of confidence in our choices. Do you think there are some stereotypes about millennials and their spending that are, I don't know, right or wrong? Mm, you know, I think uh, there's a lot of stereotypes out there, and I like to call the one with millennials, kind of also I'll put it in a nutshell, the latte factor, as in, you know, we spend <laughs> more time and money living in the moment and drinking our venti Starbucks than we do in planning for the future. But really, I think the most of us, and not just millennials, are engaged in habituated spending, you know, dull, nickel and diming. Right. And, and what is that about us? So you, you say the latte factors, like they, they don't think about those small expenditures? Um, I'm just going to say, like, full disclosure here, I buy coffee every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm okay with that because I balance out my spending habits in other ways. Uh, a really proud moment for me has been dialing it down from my $7 a day Supremo Dark Mocha habit to having black coffee or, you know, a latte, a simple latte. And, yeah, you know, at least I keep telling myself I'm happy with that. <laughs> and I am happy because I'm seeing savings add up and that feels really good. Um, I think the the lesson here is, you know, whether it's your coffee or you're ordering out for lunch or dinner, that it's not just the occasional treat. Um, it's that this behavior, if it's a little bit mindless and it's habituated, it can hurt you long term. Because I think we consistently underestimate the, the total bunch of small numbers. It really adds up. And I think we tend to, you know, it's like when you eat standing up, you're like, there's no calories in this. Anything under ten dollars, it's the threshold of you know, and that magically doesn't count. That's that's very significant. You know, if it's if it's less than ten bucks, what you know, and but if you do that, you know, <laughs> a dozen times a week, it's one hundred and twenty dollars. Mm -hmm. Wow, great information, great great perspective. Thank you, Paige. Now let us turn to one of those topics that is less fun to talk about, and as a matter of fact very devastating. We're talking to Jim Doyle, the uh, senior financial consultant with Investors Group Financial Services. And Jim, one of the great travesty or tra tragedies in life is the divorce. And it's not just it's not just an emotional time and an emotional separation, but there are financial considerations uh, here. And, and there is some important advice as to whether you should consider working with a CDFA. That's a certified divorce financial analyst. And yes, we do exist. Okay. The trouble is that we're hard to find. Okay. What an incredibly devastating time, I think, for most people going through divorce. Emotions are right on your sleeve. And we all know that this is not the best condition with which to be making significant financial decisions that are going to affect the rest of your life. Well, I think I have a couple of questions that come to mind. Uh, can or should most advisors be able to help with this type of planning? And two, what can you do to help clients during this emotional time of divorce? I'd like to say it this way, with, with the most humility that I can, okay? It's no, I don't think most advisors should be dealing in this arena. You know, I've got mediation training and uh, I've got some family facilitation uh, training, okay? And it's important for me to know when I need to step aside and bring other professionals into the equation. 
Okay. And yes, I've got the specialized knowledge that allows me to help clients explore the financial consequences of their divorce choices, but it takes a great deal of tact and patience and time to listen. Listen, here we come back to that word again. In a relationship you build, when you have somebody who listens, not just to wait and sell you a product or a fast solution, but to have the right solution for you. So what do you do to help clients in this emotional time? You know, they've just had the rug pulled out from underneath them in a lot of situations. We want to be that anchor of stability, sometimes an emotional circuit breaker. Often there's a strong desire to, to make immediate decisions, to put things back the way that they were, okay, and before the divorce, and maintain that same standard of living that they had, again, before the divorce. Problem is... Okay. There may only be one income supporting that household now, or maybe it supports two households. We want to help them deal with the urgent and maybe defer some of those decisions that they can, you know, put off for just a little bit. So those are primary issues then that, that come up. Uh, kids, uh, who's making the money, uh, who's going to supply who with what, who's going to cover what, uh, uh, a lot of tough questions to be asked, uh, especially when it comes uh, comes to kids, because it, whatever plans had been in place, I guess, are going to suddenly change. So divorce can be a different experience depending on what or where you're at. A different priority means different concerns and so on. You know, one of the questions I, I sometimes like to ask folks as I'm starting to take them down this journey a little bit is, what do you want your divorce legacy to look like? Okay, What are your kids going to see in terms of how you deal with conflict? Okay. What message are you passing on that your kids will ultimately inherit and bring into their lives? Okay. It's not just the fact that mom and dad don't necessarily like each other each more, okay. but what is that ongoing legacy going to look like? And I guess you have to consider how, do, how does each person in the relationship uh, maintain that standard of living that they plan for uh, when they were going to be together and how they can both feel the financial security moving forward. You know, in, in many divorcing situations, you're right. The first worry has to be about the kids. Uh, but if someone's divorcing, say, later in life, their biggest might worry might be, you know, what happens to them in retirement? You've got considerations around housing, pensions, health care, uh, retirement benefits. Okay, And they're more prevalent for someone who's about to retire than someone who's in the, say, younger age groups. I would imagine this would be like tiptoeing through a minefield uh, as, as an advisor. Uh, you're thrown into a sep uh, situation where people are separating. Uh, divorce seems to be the answer, uh, who gets what, and so on. Do you ever have to take steps? I guess you would have to take steps to make sure you don't get drawn into the emotional quagmire. Wow, isn't that a tough one, okay? And, and I got to tell you, I'd only be a, a, a human to, to not occasionally understand that, you know, these opportunities can exist exactly like that. But I lose my value as an advisor if I can't be there to advise in terms of what are the best options possibly and what are the solutions that they might want to consider. The moment my emotions come to the table, okay, my value goes way down. All right. So I, I guess it's appropriate to mention here, too, that you're a graduate of the UBC Sauter School of Business Family Enterprise Program. So how does this help business owners, for example, going through divorce? I think for a lot of business owners, aside from their home, the majority of their wealth is tied up in the business. And if they're putting a lot of their energy into fighting the good divorce, as we call it, OK, <laughs> you might see the value of that business uh, eroding and rather dramatically. Where we want to step in is help them perhaps look at some governance structures that might help them get through this type of a process. We're going to cover one, a couple more points here before we have to go. But I, I just at this point, I want you to uh, remind you that if you have more questions for uh, Jim Doyle or Paige, uh, that you can call them at 604-682-5431. Uh, or you can email Jim at jim.doyle at investorsgroup.com. So, uh, Jim, some solid advice, uh, some th three things that you have, the three T's that people should remember. I just wondered, uh, this is great stuff, I think, okay? Do you have the time to do the research and anticipate the tax consequences of what it is that you're looking at? Do you have the technique? Knowing what you're doing, of course, with knowledge, and of course that last one, temperament, we're going to call that emotional control. 
because people who are in this kind of a situation, the divorce situation, whether it's the family money or the business money, may not be thinking as clearly as they could, even if they are the best business people in the world. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fascinating discussion on on this on the topic that most people don't admit they don't know enough about, but you now know where you can go to get some solid help, not just for the immediate future, but for the years to come, and somebody that you can talk to and trust and with whom you can have a good relationship. You've been listening to Boomer Life on CIL 650.